There's really no easy way to say it. I messed up. Hey friends, my name is Julie. And welcome back to our farm. It's been a challenging few days here and I'm gonna do my best to fill you in on what's going on. You see, it all started a few days ago and I believe it has to do with this grain. Now we pick up spent brewer's grain from two different breweries in the Wilmington, North Carolina area. And we've been doing this for five years now. It's been a great source of extra nutrition for our animals. Now there's a lot of benefits to brewer's grain, especially for our birds, our ducks and geese. It's full of brewer's yeast, which is high in niacin, which is an essential nutrient for these animals. It's also a great source of calories for our pigs and really helps us cut our feed costs almost in half for them. And although we have our goats and sheep on pasture most of the year, we do supplement them a little bit with the brewer's grain. We do this for a couple of reasons. Having animals bucket trained makes them far easier to move or to catch when they get out. It also provides extra calories, which is important, especially when you have pregnant or lactating animals. And I've actually tried a few commercial brands of sheep or goat pellets and my animals just don't like it. Uh, but they really love this brewer's grain. It looks like a lot of volume in these bins, but most of it is water. These barrels hold about 300 pounds of the brewer's grain, and we can assume only about 30 pounds of that is in dry matter. So it's, a, it's mostly moisture, and the bulk of what's left is fiber. Remember, this is spent brewer's grain, so it's already been used in the brewing of beer. That means these grains, which are mostly oats and barley, have been stripped of a lot of their nutrition. But they've also been fermented. So there is a ton of probiotics in these, which can be really good for a ruminant's gut. We've been feeding this every day to our animals for five years with no issue until this week. really no easy way to say it. I messed up. See, it all started Saturday morning. I was here doing chores by myself. Daryl was at the farmer's market. And I was just going through the motions, sort of on autopilot, filling my buckets with grain. And a friend of mine called. I got distracted. I saw that there was some mold on top of the container of grain. I scooped it into one of our black buckets, which is always where we put that sort of thing so that it can get either dumped or put into the compost. And that way we know that that grain is not meant to be fed to animals. Somehow I ended up loading those buckets into the UTV, continuing on my phone call, drove up to the sheep, and started to dump that into their feed bins. And it was about the time I got to the third bucket that I realized that I'd given them the wrong thing. And of course, they're crazy for the grain, they love it. So they had started already voraciously eating it. And I thought, well, it couldn't be that bad. Surely they've gotten, you know, a little bit of bad feed in the past. We've never had a problem. Like I said, we've fed this for five years. It's never ever been an issue. My animals are absolutely crazy for that grain. They love it. I immediately knew it probably wasn't a good idea to leave it there, but they were already eating it. I had already dumped it. And I really just thought it'll be fine. This week I learned that the consequences of that can be far more dire. 
course, I knew it was a bad idea to feed moldy feed, and that's why we don't do it. And I'm typically the one around here that enforces these rules, that harps on everybody else to do the right thing. Any bad feed like that could easily upset the microflora of their rumen. Each day when I do chores, I always take a walk around and make sure that everybody is acting normal. That means they're up and moving. If I approach them, they get up right away. Their ears and eyes look alert. They don't have dirty butts. I look at the poop on the ground and make sure that it's solid, that there's no diarrhea. And if I'm worried about anybody, feeding them a screen allows me to easily walk up and get my hands on them. Good morning, Delilah. <laughs> and I can quickly tell if anybody is off in any way. Judy, let's go. So later on that same evening, Daryl and I went back up to the sheep to do our normal set of afternoon chores, which includes feeding them another few buckets of the brewer's grain. And it was a really hot day. And sometimes when it's really hot, over 90 degrees, they just don't feel like eating. They don't feel like coming out of their shade. And I noticed that one of the lambs didn't come out to eat. He was just standing in the shade. He is a, a dark lamb, a brown lamb, so I thought he probably just got overheated. I went in and I messed with him a little bit to make sure that he was fine. He walked away from me. He did have kind of droopy ears, which looking back should have been a sign right away that something wasn't right. But I really thought he was just overheated. So, I walked him to the water and he immediately took a big drink. Seemed fine. He went back into the shade and I thought, oh, well, that confirms it. He's just hot and he'll be fine. The next morning it became clear that he was not fine. Um, we went up to do the chores and he had separated himself from the herd, which is never a good sign. And when I tried to get him to walk back to the herd, he was staggering. You never want to see anything that could be neurological, such as ataxia in your sheep. So right away I knew that he needed some extra attention. We isolated him, we put him in a stall by himself. We gave him water, hay, and mineral. And he seemed to eat all of those fine, just a little bit weak, a little unsteady on his feet. And I really thought, okay, maybe he got a little bit of that bad grain. Sure, uh, maybe he's feeling a little bit sick, but it really didn't seem that bad. We continued to check on the lamb frequently that same evening. And he didn't seem to be improving, but he didn't seem to be getting any worse. So we left him in the stall and went to bed. The next morning we came out and he couldn't stand and we couldn't get him back up. He also appeared to be running a fever at this point. He was breathing quite heavily and his ears felt really hot to the touch. It was at this point that we felt the need to move him to the house inside in the air conditioning where we could keep a close eye on him. So guys, this is where we're at. Meet Dion, he's my patient. I had already started giving him electrolytes in his water but at this point, it seemed like he couldn't drink out of a bucket, so I started syringing both electrolytes and water to him, which he sucked down no problem. We made him as comfortable as we could in one of our stock tanks, propped his head up with a blanket, made sure he had access to hay and water, and we began the process of helping him to get fluids, to eat a little bit of hay, and moving him about every hour so that he wouldn't get sore or stiff. 
At this point, I had realized that we probably had a case of what's called listeriosis. And in all my years raising sheep or working with sheep, I had never actually seen a case. I read about it all the time. As a former animal scientist, I try to keep up on current literature, current best practices. I read a lot of veterinary journals. I also follow some Facebook groups that are full of people with lots of experience and great advice. And know that many of them had discussed their experiences with listeriosis in both sheep and goats. So I knew the symptoms. It was through one of these groups that I found a recommended treatment protocol for this type of disease. And I began looking through my medical supplies to see if I had what I needed. That protocol includes aggressive antibiotics as well as thiamine injections. Now, unfortunately, thiamine isn't something that you can buy over the counter. I did have some B complex, which contains thiamine. So I started him on a regimen of the antibiotics and the, the B complex. Luckily, I have a wonderful vet nearby that I have a great relationship with. So I immediately contacted her. She looked at the treatment protocol, made a few adjustments, and immediately ordered me a bottle of thiamine. Buddy's feeling a little bit better today. Deanna's able to hold his head up and he's eating a lot of hay today. So finally, we're seeing some improvement. So that's where we're at. We're remaining hopeful. We're gonna keep treating him as long as he wants to keep fighting. I am in regular communication with my veterinarian. She agrees with my diagnosis and my treatment protocol. We're hoping for the best here. My gut feeling is that he's gonna be fine. He's gonna recover. I wish I could do more for him, but right now we just have to keep up with the treatments and hope for the best. I'm sorry if this vlog is a bit of a bummer, but I promise to share real life farming with you and this is part of it. Animals are gonna get sick, animals are gonna die and it's hard. It's really, really hard, especially when you know that you're the one at fault and you should have known better. But we all make mistakes and I'm doing everything I can to correct the situation. Thank God all my other sheep are doing great. So I really think it was just him. He must have just got a bad bite of that food and here we are. Thanks for watching guys. I'll keep you posted and hopefully we'll have better news for you soon.